Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about the rotational dynamics of rolling motion. Rotational dynamics just means you have a problem of torque and acceleration, and rolling motion just means you have um, an object that rolls around itself while moving sideways, right? While the axis of rotation moves, um, while the object rotates. Uh, kind of like a toilet paper that instead of being fixed on the wall, you just roll it on the floor, right? So it does this. That's what rolling motion is. So let's check it out. All right, so in some problems it says uh, a disc-like object accelerates around a free axis. Again, free axis is the toilet paper that instead of being fixed on the wall, it's free to move, so it rolls while moving. Um, it says here, in these, the objects will have obviously both rotational and linear motion. Um, so, for example, in this case, this guy is falling down here. Um, it's going to have, if you release it from rest, it's going to have an acceleration this way. Um, and it's going to have an alpha this way. Okay? So, we're going to use both sum of all forces equals ma, because he has an a, and sum of all torques equals i alpha, because he has an alpha. And we're going to do this for the same object. Okay? That same object has two motions, so we can write two um, equations. And remember, the direction of positive in both will follow the direction of A, A and alpha, okay? So this is going to be positive, and this is going to be positive. Remember also that in rolling motion, rolling motion is the situation we're talking about, there's an extra equation, which is that the velocity at the center of mass, which is this, whoops, VCM, is tied to your omega, by this equation. VCM equals R omega, okay? A lot of times you see this equation, an equation similar to this, that's V equals little r omega. This one is V equals big R omega because it always has to do with the radius of this object, okay? So this is an extra equation that's possible, um, that's possible because you have rolling motion. Another equation that's also possible is just like you have V equals big R omega, you have A equals big R alpha. Okay, and in these cases, it's always going, in this problem, in rolling motion, it's always going to be big R, all right? Now, I want to remind you of some quick things. Um, when you have a disc-like object that is rolling freely, um, the torque, the torque will come from static friction, okay? Let's talk about that real quick. Which torque are we talking about? Well, this guy has an alpha, and remember, to have an alpha, you have to have a torque. Uh, acceleration comes from a net force, in and alpha comes from a net torque, okay? A torque is what's causing an alpha. And in this case, the force that's causing this torque, a torque comes from a force, and in this case, the force is static friction, okay? So, in static friction, if the torque is this way, I'm sorry, if alpha is this way, then torque has to be this way, which means that friction has to act in a direction that causes this which would be like this. I hope you can see friction static right there. I hope you can see that if you have a disc and you push, here's the surface, right? And you push in the disc like this, right? I'm doing basically like this. Imagine I'm doing this to the disc. It's gonna cause the disc to do this, right? That's exactly what friction is doing. So friction goes this way and causes a torque of friction. So the force of friction produces a torque of friction, which causes an acceleration. So the, the disc not only falls this way, but it also does this as it's falling. Okay? So two things to remember. If there is, if there is an acceleration, in other words, if your alpha is not zero, there has to be static friction. And I like to remember this by using the following short phrase. You need static friction to alpha. If you don't have static friction, you don't have an alpha. What that means is that if you're not spinning, you're not gonna start, um, if, you're, if you're initially not spinning, you have no way of beginning to spin, and if you are already spinning, you have no way of stopping your spinning. You will keep spinning because there's not going to be any change. Another keyword is if without slipping, this means that there is no kinetic friction. And guess what? This is always going to be the case always okay this is standard language not slipping so you're not going to have kinetic friction in these problems and if you have acceleration if you have acceleration if acceleration is not zero
okay? If your acceleration is not zero, then there has to be static friction because you need static friction to have acceleration. Cool? Let's do a problem. So it says here, when a solid cylinder um, of mass M and radius R is released from rest, it rolls down without slipping along an inclined plane. So let's draw that. I got an inclined plane like this, just like the picture up above, and I release this from rest, so the initial velocity is zero. This guy has mass M and radius R, and he rolls down, okay? Rolls down means it's gonna do, it's gonna have an acceleration this way, without slipping. Without slipping is standard language, but it does tell you that there is no kinetic friction for sure. Along an inclined plane that makes an angle of theta. And we wanna derive an expression for the angular acceleration of the disk. We wanna know what is alpha, okay? How do we do this? Well, this is an acceleration problem, so we would use F equals ma, except that there's also rotation. So we're going to use F equals ma and torque equals I alpha. Um, and both of them are for the same object because the object has two motions. One object with two motions means two equations. Sum of all forces equals ma, and sum of all torques equals I alpha, okay? Now let's look at the forces uh, on, this, on this thing here. So I'm gonna draw it over here. I have an mg pulling you down. I have to decompose the mg into mgx and mgy this way. Um, I have a normal like this, and I have a friction that acts over here, friction static. Those are all the forces. In terms of torques, the only torque comes from this, okay? Normal on a, on a disc that spins on the surface never produces any torque, um, and mg and the center of mass never produces any torque, if you remember, right? So the only one here is torque of static friction. Cool? Remember also that once you split mg into mgx and mgy, mg is essentially dead. You, you got rid of it and replaced it with two other things. So it's really no longer there. Remember also that mgy cancels out with normal. So really the only things you have is, these are the two forces in the x-axis, which is down the plane. Um, and this is the only torque, okay? So the forces are um, mgx and friction. Now, which one is positive and which one is negative? Well, this is the direction of positive, so mgx is the positive one and friction is negative. That equals ma. Torque, there's only one torque, which is the torque of static friction. The moment of inertia I is going to be the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder because I, it says right there, half mr squared. In alpha, remember, we wanna replace alpha with A. If you have A and alpha, you wanna get rid of alpha and change it into A. And that's so that instead of having A and alpha, you have, <clears throat> excuse me, you have A and A. To do this, we use the fact that A equals R alpha Big R, because this is rolling motion, rolling mo. So I can rewrite alpha as A over big R. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put A over big R over here. And, and that's so that this alpha becomes an A. So I have A and A. Cool. Last step is I have to, there's, there's um, not much else to do here. I'll get back to this in a second. I'm gonna expand this one more time. And this is going to be torque of any force F is FR sine of theta. The force we're talking about here, static friction. R is the R vector. Um, in this case, it's always going to be the radius as well because notice that friction always acts at a distance of the entire radius. If you draw an R vector here, R vector of course is from the axis of rotation to the point where the force happens. For friction, it's always going to be big R. So the torque of friction is always friction, big R, and the angle is always 90 degrees. So this is always the case for, I'm gonna put here always, the torque due to friction is always F big R, okay? So now that I did that on the side, I'm just gonna plug it in here. And then look what happens. All the R's will cancel, which is neat, R, cancels with this, this cancels with this, and you're left with friction static equals half ma. 
Now, I wanna warn you not to get too excited with the expanding of these equations and rewrite friction into mu normal. You could do this, you may remember friction is mu normal, you should remember friction is mu normal, but you don't wanna, re you don't wanna rewrite, you don't wanna expand, and that's because, guess what? There's a friction here, and there's a friction here. All friction is doing, um, similar to what you would see with a tension, if you had a cable pulling on a block, um, all it's doing is connecting these two equations, right? So don't expand friction, just plug it in right there. So let's do that. Um, mg, if you remember, mg is mg sine of theta, that's mgx becomes mg sine of theta, minus half ma equals ma. Notice here that I wrote little m, little m, and big M, and that's because I usually write f equals ma with a little m, but I usually write i with a big M because a lot of the equations are like that. It's really the same thing because it's referring to the same object, so I can cancel. If you have a single object, the mass will cancel, okay? And we're solving for a, so I'm gonna move this over here. I have g sine of theta equals a plus um, half a, okay? A plus half a is one plus half, one and a half, 1.5 or three over two a. So a is the two goes up here, two g sine of theta, and the three goes down there, boom, okay? This is the final answer for a. We still gotta get alpha, but I wanna, again, make a point here. Um, notice how this equation looks familiar. It should look familiar. If you have a block, that is accelerating down and there's no friction, right? There's no kinetic friction. Um, it's accelerating down because of mgx. The acceleration of this block is g sine of theta. You may remember this from like back in the day, right? g sine of theta. Well, notice this equation is very similar, except that instead of, instead of having like a one here hiding, right? You have some fraction in front of it. And this fraction is always going to be less than one. The point here is that in rotation questions, that are the rotation equivalent of linear questions, right? Like this is just the rotational equivalent of this. That's an ugly arrow. Um, this is just the rotation equivalent of this. So the equation for A here should look similar to this equation. And that's how you know you are on the right track, provided of course that you vaguely remember this and you can say, hey, that looks familiar, okay? So I like to make that point a lot because this way you can know that you're general, generally in the right direction and it gives you a little bit more certainty that you're correct. And another thing that allows you to do is that if this number here is more than one for whatever reason, um, which it would be if you screw up your signs, um, then you know that you're wrong and you have to go back. There should always be uh, less than one. All right, so let's wrap it up and find alpha. Alpha is A over R. So it's just gonna be 2G sine of theta divided by 3R, okay? This is our final answer, and we're done. That's it for this one. Um, hope this made sense. Make sure you know how to do this stuff. Let me know if you have any questions, and let's keep going.